well, we've had some conversations this week. I hope that, honestly, that all of y'all are doing fine. We had four people on Facebook. I don't know what happened, but... I was that's good. It wasn't on the Dream World Show. Oh, okay. Well, we're back. We're back now. That's why we had four people. <laughs> but we're back. Um, okay, Dre, you want to... What was you talking about earlier? I don't remember. You said something you wanted to talk about. I did not. I didn't have anything to talk about. Dre said we always. You got a post, and you say, "Oh, there's something we should talk about." The uh, let's talk about what Al sent. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> um, you're not in either camera, baby cakes. Uh, um, okay, so you guys, it's been rough in this house. And uh, it's a lot going on in the world. Hopefully, everybody is doing okay. Everybody's doing well. Um, you know, sending prayers out to you, Miko. I know you said you're good, but we still sending prayers your way. Winston, I'm glad you're good, too. Um, we, we got a, a video today. Uh, and it was basically a young lady vocalizing how she felt about the, the brothers that are out on the street that are hanging, that are, are old, okay? They've been on the street on the same corner for 20, 30 years doing the same old thing. You know, flashing money, buying cars, buying grills and clothes and things, but not putting anything into each other. Uh, putting anything in place so that if something happens, they're okay. Um, and yet, they are constantly talking about nothing. You know, being on the street, that's what we do. That's where we are. Um, how do you how do you break away from that rigmarole? The same, your same friends that you grew up with, your same people on the same corner doing the same thing and not going anywhere without looking like, you know, cause if you say, ah, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be there. I don't, I don't, I'm not doing that anymore. They're going to look at you like you crazy. I mean, this is what we do. This is where we have been. And you, you ain't going nowhere. This is what we doing. But why is it that one, they pull you so that you can stay with them. And two, they not going nowhere with what they doing. That that was the whole conversation with that. Then there was uh, another conversation too. So there are two different topics. There was another conversation about why are there so many single women during this time, uh, and and you can't use the the fact that you know men are dogs and and they're hurting these women. And women are, are being single because of it. You, you, it's got to be another reason, a better reason, why there's so many single women out now. <clears throat> um, I don't know how you tie those two topics into one another. You um, can't. I'm a, oh, <laughs> I can um, just speak on the first one. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel that... Um, you can get out of any situation you want to get out of. The point of the point has to be that you want to get out of it. Um, I look at guys who doing whatever the case may be. Um, you got to understand that nothing we do in our life is for for us. Someone's always looking at us. So for the OGs and things that nature, you got another generation looking up to you. You know within yourself that. Where you are in life is not like a good place. So I will hope that you would not be selfish and keep um, luring them into the same rat race, right? Stop stop pouring into them so they can do something better. Um, or you make a decision that I want to do something better for myself and go and do it. They would see it and they will follow you. If you have more guys going out and doing their thing... Um, the ones who's looking up to them, whatever case may understand, like, you know what, there is a way out. Um, that That's how I view it. I mean, we got to look at some people who get stuck in certain, well, feel like they're stuck in certain places. But we got to understand everything happens for a reason, right? 
So you like you say, you got the corner, you got the people out doing whatever the case may be, um, living a certain lifestyle, and they stuck, right? Um, Cause that's all they know. But some things you can be stuck in, and you can actually turn around, turn it around. So I actually, before I came in, which I'm gonna go back when I finish. Hopefully, we're looking at this guy in South Carolina. Hopefully, I get to meet him when I go down there. That he grew up an only child on a on a on a hog farm. So all he did was work. His father was old school. They from the south. You work. Matter of fact, you work. Then you come to your own work. So it had a hog farm. He did this all his life. That's all he knew. So on his graduation day, he was trying to figure out his life. What I'm gonna do with my life? This girl walked up and was like, I don't know what you're excited for. All you can do is go right down the street and cook some hogs. That's where you gonna be stuck at. He's like, Dad, that's that's all that's all my life is. I'm just gonna be cooking hogs for the rest of my life. So he went to his dad with his concerns. His father was like, Look, I need you back at the house so we can start on these hogs. So <clears throat> he felt stuck. He didn't know what to do. Then his dad turned around and had a heart heart attack. So now he really stuck. But about turning things around, that becomes some of the prominent business that this dude enjoyed the hog so much that he's willing to invest so this guy can go open up a spot. Then this dude's on Chef's Table, which is like one of the top chef shows or whatever case is, about his hog. So, I don't want no one to ever get discouraged about where you are in life because everything can change. It still work, It still depends on you. Um, don't let nobody else deter you or make you feel a certain way or, you know, where you are in life. You know what I'm saying? But it starts with you. You got to um, you gotta want to do something different. Or you want to make the situation you're in different or better. All right. We got a comment. For being in the street culture, you got to walk away. Yeah, but some people can't just walk away. They don't know how, you know. Yeah. that's a, And again, uh, you're, you're right, Miko. But my thing is. You got some dudes, they so caught up in it. And like you said, they have nothing else going on in life, right? So that's all they know, right? Until we figure it out, <clears throat> until they figure out, like, there's something in them that actually they can get this stuff out of, but they haven't tapped into or they don't believe in it, which almost means like you don't believe in yourself. So you get stuck. Not knowing that you're sitting on probably a gold mine. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, I... I, I try to pull things out of people, like, you know, what your gifts are, purpose, or whatever case may be, to try to get them to see, like, you know what? It might not be as glamorous as what you're accustomed to, whatever case may be, but this is some longevity right here. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's hard to walk away sometimes, but I, I don't think it's that hard. You just got to make that determining factor. That's all that is. All right, we had another comment about the lady. TV. Uh, it's the Beyonce culture for women. They too independent and don't allow men to be men once in a relationship. Yikes! What's wrong with being independent? Too independent? Don't know how to cut the switch off. Don't ha- don't know how to cut that switch off. You might as well be by yourself, right? Yeah. I I understand that one. That's the what I need a man. Uh, <laughs> what I need a man for culture. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cold winter. It's gonna be a cold winter, huh? But um, yeah. Um, but I, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't really knock some of them because that that happened over time and over years. What we, you know, that women had to get in that position. Um, I mean, I can get on my soapbox about that because my thing is, all right, I'm gonna get on just for a quick second. I'm gonna hop off. Oh boy. So what happened is this goes way back, way back. So when we're supposed to be the protectors, providers, things of that nature, when you fall from that grace of doing that, you lose respect. And that, and I feel that's what's happening. Now they got to the point where women feel like I can make as much as a man can make. I can do everything a man can do, whatever. It's like, where's the respect or whatever the case may be? It's my personal opinion. Yeah. So what happened is, I'm going to take it back to slavery. So, you're, when we got here, when you was in Africa or whatever, when you got here, this man was the you know, a war. He was a protector. And you had this man come, do whatever he wanted to do to this man in front of you. Break you. So, now you feel, now you on, as a woman, and especially if you got kids, you're on protect mode. Like, you know what? He can't really help me. So, now it's a survival thing. So, then as, as, 
as long as you're in survival scenario, you're teaching your kids now. Look, don't do this, don't do. You know what I mean? So then you start raising kids. That's I definitely don't want to use the word weak, but let me say not as rebellious because they was taught that right? you don't look this person in the eye, you walk with your head down, all this stuff, right? Which is what it was supposed to do. But what happened is overall is that that the way you looked at the man in the house, it turned. You know what I mean? So now the woman's like, I got to fend for myself and my mm-hmm. kids. Poor traumatic slavery disorder. Boom. Oh. That's what I'm going with. So what happened? So over time, and then you get, and then like, when we, if we go bring it forward, you have women, like I said before, they, and they're making the money, they fought for their rights and everything, which is cool. And then they, they raising their daughters, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need no man. You can get out here and do, your, do it yourself and boo boo right? Yeah, and then the other way, you got some women that are raising sons as single mothers, and they raising them to be dependent on women. Because there's a lot of guys out here that are just moving from house to house, living with whatever woman can take care of them. Yeah. Feminism. That's because, that's, that's yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that comes from, you know, not being out. Know, and that becomes from, again, I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't want to put it all on women, I swear it on, because I don't want to get into that. But... Some women, yeah, they raise them boys because you baby them so long. Mm-hmm. So that's all they know. And then you put them out in the real world. That's what they looking for. And then the women get tired of taking care of babies. They don't want no baby. They want a man. They get tired of taking care of a man. And then they end up just being by themselves. So, I don't know. That's a tricky one. Um, but yeah, that's just my... Two cents on it, probably don't mean nothing. Baby boy, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> perfect example. Exactly. What's up, Dale? Um, yeah. So, but um, but like I say, about one other thing about trying to raise up. Like I said before, I, I think that we need to um teach our, the next generation and um the importance. Like you know, I was looking at like this whole election thing. Like I was just so shocked of 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 how difference, how the a difference of a, a political stance that we have in this country, not within our own circle, and I ain't saying we all got to vote the same way or feel the same way, but it was just it was shocking, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was shocking that that I I, I didn't realize there was so many people, you know, that went differently or felt differently, even, even though we grew up and lived. The same and felt I felt that we felt the same things and I, I but it's just so but I think it's important that we teach our kids m- more about that about what's going on in this country um laws and things that they so they have a leg to stand on because I was talking to my cousin like every day I've been learning something new and it's and it hurts because like you know I'm this age and I'm just knowing this stuff because it never was on the forefront I never was taught this stuff this wasn't a conversation that went on in the house and, um, and an opinion is an opinion, you know. Everybody's opinion is not correct. Everybody is raised a different way. Everybody has a different opinion, and that's what the world is based on. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, so nothing I, wrong. We ain't saying there's nothing. I don't. Wrong. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, like I said, vote for who you want to vote for, and all that, as long as you exercise your vote. That's all I say. But I think the conversation need to be held more in the house. You know what I'm saying? And that to have it held whereas you're making them go a certain way. Like, I never want my kids to vote just the way I vote. Um, if it comes to religious situations, I, I want them to be able to stand where they want to stand. But I think some type of conversation needs to happen early so they can make a determining factor as they get older. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one thing that we're, that's missing in the household, too. Uh, those type of conversations, and I, and I know because we caught up in a red race, and society got us running around with a chicken, uh, like a chicken with his head cut off. But somehow we got to try to, um, we got to get them conversations in somehow. You know, I think it's just being important for our future. Agreed. But um, yeah, yeah, I man. This I, I've been I've been looking at some stuff, man. Just really got. Me. I looked at this show. I don't know if you guys ever seen it's called Enslaved. If anybody ever seen that, it's um, Samuel Jackson, like a little doc- documentary. When it's nobody's opinion is wrong if you define the word opinion. Right. No, yeah. yeah. I, I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. no one's That's opinion right. is wrong. You know what I'm saying? If you want... If this is... This if is this is what works you for think, you... Yeah, then that's what works for you. Yeah. 
I know who am I to say if this person not right for you or not? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know where you going in life. So yeah, I never uh, try to. That's why I stay away from the type of conversations anyway because I don't want nobody feel you know uncomfortable or whatever. But um, yeah. So anybody ever seen the show Enslaved? I've been watching that and um, Bad Bird something. It's about uh, Joe Brown. Which I, you know what, I never knew Joe Brown was a real person. I thought it was somebody. Oh, I'd be John Brown. I'd be old John Brown. What's that, Gil? I thought that was just a saying. So, um, I don't know. Um, but I've been into those, and um, so I watched this Enslaved movie, which really, really, um, had me thinking, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It, it. it it took back it, it took me back to like wow like how uneducated I am about you know our history um things that really occurred and how I realized that some things we are taught you know what I'm saying and are not all truths and or have truth and how important it is that we need to again instill certain information into our kids or whatever the case may be so they don't be you know blindsided or so shocked. Cause like I said, at this age, I was I'm looking at that and I was like, "What? I just never knew." And it's like I feel bad um, that we don't have them conversations and households coming up. So I wouldn't be, you know. What I'm saying I talk to some of my friends and they be, you know, them, you know, I feel like on certain subjects they just more educated, you know. And I'm like, wow, we just never had them conversations. Why? Winston says, hard word to define. I did a study years ago and had to define that word. Opinion, personal inner belief, not based on anything factual. Exactly. Yes. And people need to understand that. This is There's no facts here. You getting so mad, angry, defriending people over their opinion. Their opinion is what they feel. It's nothing... It, it doesn't mean it's true. It just means that that's what works for them. And people need to learn to respect other people's opinions. You have your opinion, and that's not factual. It's just your opinion, and, and I have mine. Now, be mindful of the conversations you're having, though, because if we're having a factual conversation, we cannot use your opinions. Um, exactly. And the reason I bring that up is a conversation going on with my cousin. I had, was a duo uh, with a co-worker. It was over you know, politics. So, whereas my cousin might have been going to more factual information, meaning documents, putting certain things that's like, this factual, this is right here. When a guy was basically going off his opinion. Mm-hmm. He, and he stopped and said, hold on, hold on. Are we having a conversation based on facts or are we just talking about how we feel? If we just talking about how we feel, then we don't have to have this conversation because you are entitled to your opinion. So, that's how I tell you, like, we have a conversation, are we... If you can't bring no factual information to it, it's just your, you know. Like and you that said, whole opinion. conversation ended up in a defriending, you know. Just it shouldn't be that way. Well, they didn't. They, my cousin, he said they just walked off. He's like, listen, you entitled to your opinion. We agree to disagree. Let's go on, carry on with the day. We ain't got to talk about this no more. Mm. Because, like I said, and he told the guy, he said, I'm just trying to get factual information on where you're standing, so I can understand. The guy didn't have any. Now he just based off we. Uh, what he felt based off a conversation with somebody else or whatever the case may be, but yeah, that's what happened at the Trump rally in D.C. They they pulled over people and were interviewing them about how they felt and their opinion, and people were giving their opinion, and C- CNN was spitting back facts. Well, I know you said this, but this is this, this is this, mm-hmm. this is what happened, there, and people were getting upset. Yeah, because if you're not going to chase the not the information, like meaning doing your research, doing. Don't tell me what you heard. What information? I tell you this: often, What information did you research? Did you get that you can show me? Yeah. You know, educate me. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, but yeah, I, I try to stay away from the drunk and everything, conversations in a way. But um, dang, that's about to say something. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I again, I'm looking at a show right now. Uh, um, this cooking show, I can't wait to go to Charleston, y'all. Just so much history stuff I've been learning. Just like I can't wait to get down there and really dig into like that Geechee culture, whatever case may be. But um, yeah, man. Um, it just let me know now, like what we've been going through, like how important education is and how it needs to be brought up in the in the household. It need certain conversations just need to be held. 
um, I'm hoping, you know what I'm saying, like I can pour this in my mind. My grandkids are like young now, but I'm just hoping that I'm able to pour information in to give them, have them balanced by the time they get the age to make decisions. Um, at least they have both sides of the information. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I said before, they when you're in school, they say, oh, Chris, Columbus did this. Daddy, they grand, pop up. They told me that Christopher Columbus did. I'm like, oh, okay, for real. Well, look here, look at this. Let me let's read this right here. You know, so sh- and I'm not shutting down school systems, whatever case it be, but I want them to see it all and let them make a determining factor. That's all. And even when you think that they're not listening to you, they're listening. Mm-hmm. They'll come back later and tell you everything you said. So don't get discouraged mm-hmm. if you're talking to your kids and they seem like it's you know off because they they hear you. Yeah, um, yeah, um, shoot, I had something to say, I forgot what it was, man, um, but yeah, so, you know, everybody getting ready for the holidays, mm-hmm. y'all got any big plans, any, uh, special items, I mean, I know when this whole COVID thing, so I don't know too many people having big gatherings like they used to, um, I think, it, uh, Dale, you doing any, uh, special cheesecakes or anything for the holiday? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think we can keep it simple on our end over here. Um, I already talked to my mom. She children staying at home. Um, my sister staying at home. They doing everybody just doing their home thing. So playing it safe this year. Yeah, so it's coming real fast though. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Kajo. Um, but yeah, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm sorry. I have a lot tonight. Just my mind is like. Like I say, for the last couple of weeks, I've been just really just, you know what I'm saying, research on myself, like, whoo, researching myself to better myself, you know, mentally, um, yeah, spiritually, we, stuff we like that. We both quiet. We got a lot going on. I but, know a um, lot of people do. Yeah. Like I said, this, this is like, we living in some crazy times and it's like, I was just sitting today just thinking like, is this it? Like, is this the new Small dinner day, right? Yeah, everything just gonna be hey, Trina. real simple, cause oh, I'm telling you, uh, it just be like when you look back, like we about to be. Is this it? Is this the new norm, man? You know what I'm saying? We gonna be. Remember back in the day, we used to see other countries. I think most like Asia, and what they used to walk around with masks. I'm like, that people are crazy. Yeah. Like, did they know something back then? You know what I'm saying? Michael so, Jackson. Right. <laughs> so. He had the gloves on, the mask. On. I look at. I look at like. Even from a business standpoint, like, people that had aspirations and dreams to open up things, you know what I'm saying, let's, of course, I'm going to the cooking thing, like, restaurants, whatever, like, that don't even make sense anymore, you know what I'm saying, because you can't have that many people, you know what I'm saying, like, now you got to restructure everything, Yeah. you know what I'm saying, you got to rethink everything, how you want to move. I was just reading the other day, there's this restaurant in D.C., well-known restaurant, and um, they fed people. They they not only, you know, had a great business, but they also fed the homeless, too. And now they are in a position where not only can they not feed the homeless, but they almost can't keep their doors open, you know, because of COVID. So it's just, I don't remember the name of it. Um, it showed up on my um, Apple News. Uh, it's it's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been thinking of stuff like that. People coming to ask me about that. I'm like, I don't like even know. That's like a something. makes hope. Oh. Viti, like V I T T I, something like that. Oh. If y'all know, let me know. But uh, it's it's a lot going on. Yeah. So. Hey. hey. But um, yeah, that's all I pretty much had. Like I said, I'm gonna go finish watching this show, whatever case may be. Staying out the way. KB, you and me both, bro. <laughs> Staying out of the way. That's all you can do right now. Six feet. To, yeah, <laughs> trying to um come up with some a different plan. I guess you know, like I gotta adapt to what's going on in the world. But um, but all right, y'all, y'all have a good evening. Um, like I said, if y'all got any topics and things y'all want to speak on, DM us so we can get everything together before we uh get on here and be babbling on and stuff. But um, we appreciate y'all. We uh see y'all next Tuesday. Peace.